Hey guys, Fox Rock with another live game commentary. This game I'm playing Zed Jungle for you guys. This is one of my Elo Hell videos where I play on my account, which is in silver, bronze, I don't know. Uh, actually, the more I play this account, obviously the more videos I make, the higher Elo it gets. So I don't know where it is actually at now. I don't know where my MMR is at. I know I'm in silver as far as my league goes, but who knows where I'm actually at. Anyway, so I'm playing Zed Jungle this game. I wanted to play Zed Jungle because I actually really like Zed. As a as a jungler, but I he he's very um, different to what most junglers uh, would usually be like, because he's not like tanky. He doesn't have a lot of CC. He is just an assassin. He's just a fun jungler to play, and he doesn't really bring too much to the team, which is why he's not a great jungler in my opinion. This is the biggest thing that holds him back is that if you're not fed, if you're not strong, you can be very very useless playing Zed. Um, but anyway, I'm playing him because I find him fun. So that's what I'm going with. Now, I just leveled up my Q there, which I shouldn't have done. <laughs> I don't want to level up my Q level 1. I want my E. Uh, that was a mistake by me because I thought we were going to get a kill. But anyway, so you'll notice two things which are special about this game. Different about this game. Okay, this is really bad, actually. Really bad start. We shouldn't... Oh, man, this has fucked me up big time. We shouldn't have invaded there and then just all left it and recalled. We should have taken it. Because now I'm like 10 seconds behind my uh, path. And it means Teemo's going to have to help me. And Teemo can't give me that much help. Because he's got to go top lane. I really needed bot lane to help me. Which is why I would have started at blue normally. So I'm just going to say thanks for that. It's going to give me all the help he can. But it's not really enough to be honest. Um, two things you'll notice which are different about this game. Are my... Uh, items and my summoner spells. Now, I'm actually just going to recall now because that has really kind of fucked me up as far as my path has gone. And I don't... I need more health. I'm going to need more health because I've started Longsword. So I'm just going to buy five health potions. Now, um, so yeah, like I said, my starting items and my summoners are different in this game. The reason why they're different is because this is just how I like to play Zed. I like to have Ignite on him because you really need to snowball when you're playing Zed. If you don't have Ignite, you don't have a lot of kill potential early on. In fact, you have very, very low kill potential, to be honest, unless you're catching someone out of position. So you need, in my opinion, you really having this Ignite gives you a lot more pressure. And to be honest, one of the biggest downfalls of junglers in general is that they only have one summoner spell because obviously the other summoner spell is taken up with, uh, with Smite. So you don't have two summoners. Uh, compared to everyone else who does have two summoners and normally Zed with his flash and with his ignite can be very very powerful But it's just not the case on, on jungle Zed because you have to have your smite so I opt in to take flash instead of uh, Ignite and I like to do this on a, on a handful of junglers people who there's a there's a few categories onto what what I'll do whether I'll take ignite or, or uh, flash um, if you can have a lot of pressure early, if you are very strong early, then having sm uh, Ignite is a very good idea. And, and you can take it over Flash like Zed. Also, if you have an escape ability of your own, then you don't need, necessarily need to even take uh, Flash. So that's why I've got Ignite on Zed. Um, but it's kind of just personal preference, I guess. You can really screw yourself over if you don't have your if you don't have Flash and you play a bit too ballsy. Anyway, so. And uh, my my starting items as well. I just I'm looking at this guy's items. He has Dawn Shield and a Health Potion, which means he wouldn't have had room to buy a ward. But I don't think there's any any gank going top because his lane is pushing, and he'll just jump away from me anyway. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to get that. Um, but my my starting items. The reason I start Longsword is because whenever I like to rush a Vamp Scepter into Cutlass slash Blade of the Ring King, whenever I play a champion that can do that, I like to rush. I like to start with Longsword. Now I see this Nasus is ganking mid. Um, he has a level on me because he had a better start than me, even though we invaded. But we can actually, if we can bait this Karthus into going close to uh, Zeraph because of the gank, then we can get this done. Oh wow, I didn't use my W. I could actually be dead here. Although I think I'm going to die now. Ah, uh, the ignite might kill him. Basic attack, beautiful. There we go. So my the fact that my red buff just uh, ran out then, kind of sucked actually. But I don't think I would. I don't think I would have finished him off with that ignite. So uh, that was good basic attack, and it's good for him to get it because now he's got double buff. If I'd taken that kill when I was dead, I wouldn't have got double buff because I would have been dead. So 
you know, it's good for the buffs to live on in the Zeraf. And uh, to be honest, it's good as well because they, even though it would be, I would have liked the kill to snowball harder, I still got a primary assist. And when there's only one assist on a kill, you get like 150 gold, which isn't that which isn't that much different from the kill itself. It's only like another 150 gold different from getting the kill. So that is a good, good. You know, I'm happy with that. And the fact that then he gets the kill as well means he can also snowball. And Zareth is a very, very powerful mid laner. So he can snowball very hard himself. Especially against Karthus, who can be very vulnerable. The only thing Karthus is good at in lane uh, is being safe and farming. And so this is actually looking very peculiar. Oh, he's level 6. Holy shit. That guy just uses flash, I think. And I've got my colors as well because now I can slow him. So if I can find him, I can kill him. And he's not level 6 either, so he can't finish me off. But I'm just going to go fight. I'm just going to fight this Nasus. This Nasus can't really stop me. Especially considering now I've got a Cutlass. Oh my god, I didn't press W. Why is he using his ult? I could have, oh my goodness, I was baiting that out so hard and then his, his skill actually killed me. I was baiting it for just like one more second. Oh my goodness, I played that so poorly. I could have just killed him. Or got close to killing him anyway. That was so bad by me. See, this is, when you're playing Zed and snowballing, I like to get into the enemy jungler's face quite a lot. I could have, I could have just like killed, what's his face? Nasus and then ran away. That's probably what I should have done. But I didn't. I tried to stay and make the extra play, and I just completely goof, like completely fucked it up. Like I, I just, I just messed it up entirely. Like, I had it all planned out in my head, and I, I do that. I do that quite a lot, actually. I do that too much. I plan out the moves and then just completely fail them. In I <laughs> just completely fail them. So that was really poor by me. I should have, I should have had better awareness of Carter's skills. I wasn't really looking at his damage. I was just waiting to see when I could go and get him, rather than, you know, what would happen if he, yeah. So I know this guy's blue is up, and that this guy's if this guy's sitting at mid, I can take this blue away from him. And I don't I'm not even gonna smite it unless he runs over to me because I don't there's no need to. I don't I don't need to smite it because there's nothing no one no one's gonna challenge this from me. So I'm just gonna time that. Time when it's dead, timed when it died. So I knew that their blue would be up because it was like seven minutes twenty, and if blue buff spawns at like 155, and if the person starts at blue buff, then they're gonna kill it around 205, something like that. It takes five minutes to respawn, which means the blue buff, the first buff, is usually up at around seven, seven ten around that time. So that's when uh, I knew it would be up, and because I saw him mid, I thought it'd be a free kill for me. So uh, I just write down TB, which is me trying to time the buff. So TB eight fifteen, which means five minutes from then is when the blue buff is going to respawn, and because I typed it a few seconds after, it's going to be around thirteen twelve is going to be when their buff is respawning. Now, something which happens quite a lot whenever you steal someone's buff away is that they go for a for what I call a rage invade, classic rage invade, where they actually just go for your buff. So if I steal this guy's blue buff, he'll be like, "Fuck that! This guy get getting this blue buff for free. I'm gonna go take away his blue buff, and he'll just run at my blue and take it away, or at least try to." And that is a very, very dangerous thing for people to be doing because often they can't. They're not in a position to take away the blue buff. They just get like blinded by rage and they try to go for it and they fuck up and it it never ends well for them. Uh, luckily for, for Nasus, and unfortunately for me, he didn't actually go for the Rage Invade that time. But I'm just looking bot now, and I think I'm going to be able to get a kill here. Oh well. I think the nerf from Cutlass's range actually might have just lost me that kill. But I should be able to kill, I should be able to kill this guy. Oh, I don't, I want to get the kill, I don't want to do Dragon, I want to be greedy. I don't think we can do Dragon anyway, to be honest. Gotcha! I love that kind of fade away ulti kills. They're always pretty beautiful. Now Nasus is top as well. He just killed Teemo. Uh, that means his red is not up. Okay, never mind. He's got his red. I'm I'm kind of surprised by that. I thought he would have left his red, but he got that quite early. So that was that's uh, shame shame for me. But because this guy is um because he's still top, this Nasus is still top lane. I probably should have done dragon there actually. 
These guys were saying we should have done drag, and that was probably the right call. We should have done it. I just got really greedy and wanted to kill the Varus because I want to snowball. Um, and because Nasus, yeah, Nasus was top. I was thinking that I, I was thinking it's a bit too early for us to do this because I don't think I didn't think we could take it away without um, what's the word like for free basically. I didn't think we could do that. But if he was top, then yeah, we could we could have done that. I think so. That was poor by me. That was. I was just greedy by me. I just wanted to kill too much, and I should have gone for the objectives. Objectives are always worth more than kills. Dragon Tower is always worth more than kills. Even, arguably, even, like, a... Sometimes a buff is worth more than a kill. It depends who you're playing as. So, for example, if you're playing versus an Anivia, and you take away his... their their blue buff, that is often worth quite a lot. That's... It may even be worth dying to do that. Just because Anivia with blue buff is extremely potent, and... It also depends on who you're playing as. So if you've got like a LeBlanc mid lane, who can't push out towers very, can't push out waves very well on her own, and if Nivia therefore has that blue buff, then she's just going to push and be a real problem for you. Hold on, I'll talk after this kill. You mother f stealing my kills, sniper shining my kills, fucking, fucking Ash. I've got my pink ward just so we can take this dragon away now. See, what I did there was I engaged on my ulti just so I could put off a lot of damage onto him. And then as soon as Alistair got near to me, I instantly used my W, used my uh, other clone to get away from Alistair. That way Alistair didn't even hit me with a knockoff. It was only, I think only Varus hit me with his CC or something. So that was all. But see, like, we don't take this away particularly quickly. Zed doesn't really do this particularly quickly. But uh, there's no one around to really stop us, so we get it for free. And then it's dead, and we're going to time it. It's six minutes for uh, Dragon, so that would be 18.22. When is our time? They're blue. They're, their blue's up in 30 seconds. So I'm going to take these wa these walls, which I probably shouldn't. I should just run over to the blue. And then I'm going to go over to blue and take that away for the second time. Now, for my skill order, I like to go E, Q, W. I max my E because it, you can just spam it in the jungle. It has a really, really short cooldown. And uh, it just does a lot of quick AoE damage and it's pretty quick for clearing so that's why I like to match my E um, and then my Q just for like you know extra damage later on now this blue should be up in like about 10 seconds or so so I'm just gonna do that and then my build as well I like to rush a Blade of the Rune King Blade of the Rune King is really a really really good item on Zed because your the active works with your ultimate so your ult you do extra damage based off how much damage the enemy has taken and your, that includes damage from items like Blade of the Rune King, which is why it's a really good idea to rush it. And it's also a very good item in general just to get as, as a jungler because it means you clear... Whenever you get attack speed, you clear a lot faster. And the active on it is just very nice in general for ganking, especially for someone who doesn't have a lot of CC inherently. So someone like Zed does not have a lot of CC. He only has one form of CC, which is when you use your clone and then use your E. Or use your shadow, sorry, and then use your E. That slows people, but it's not that reliable. It's not a great form of CC. Um, so having that Blade of the Ring King really helps just to, for him to catch up catch up to you. It's just a really nice item in general. So I'm going to go back and buy that. I know my red buff just respawned when I was sitting there. But I didn't want to take it away. I wanted to wait until I got back. And now I'm going to take it. The reason why I didn't want to take it before I recalled was because if I did, I would I would be recalling and then running back to the, you know, back into to the... I don't even know what to call it, back into the game, back into the battle, I don't know, back into the jungle, into the lanes. And uh, my, the whole time I would spend uh, doing that would be time wasting the duration of the red buff. And the only reason why I would take it and waste it, waste the duration of the red buff, I'd like be okay with wasting the duration, is if I thought it would be if I thought it would be stolen. If I thought Nasus would be near nearby enough, if I thought Nasus would be nearby enough to actually, like, stop, uh, to, to take away the red buff, then I would just take it myself. But because I know that he wasn't near, I didn't think he would steal it. I was okay with just waiting and then taking it later. Now, I, I didn't want to go top because I know the Xerath is DC. I didn't realize Nasus would show top and just push the lane though, so I probably should have gone and defended top. I don't know where Karthus is though. Oh, there he is. I can probably kill him actually. My ignite's up in 5 seconds. In 5 seconds, I can probably kill this guy. Although, I do only have rank 1 in my ulti. Let's give it a go. Okay, he also has... I got him. I didn't. I actually should have thought that through. I should have thought that he had his. Uh, he had an ignite. Uh, an exhaust up. 
But yeah, I saw, I saw Nasus was top uh, as well earlier, so I was just I had a feeling his red might be up, and it is up, so I'm just going to take that away as well. Just absolutely dominating as far as jungling goes, as far as pressure goes. I've got a pink ward as well, and I'm just going to use it in Stryber, which is probably warded here. Yeah, it is. So they see me, which is a shame, but I don't really care because I don't have my ulti up, so I didn't, don't really think there's much going as far as a gank is concerned. Because I don't have my ult up. So I don't really think I can tower dive. You can't really tower dive in Azazor anyway. He has too much CC under tower. You'll just get caught under tower and die. And he's also, you can't you can't kill him because of his ultimate. So anytime there's a Azazor on the enemy team, you have to be very, very careful of tower diving. Um, so I'm not going to go for that. And what's his face? Varus as well is pretty difficult to tower dive just because of his ultimate. He'll hold you in place. And he actually has quite a lot of burst too. So it's actually it's not very easy to, to dive him either. Does this guy have his ult up? He doesn't have his ult up, I don't think. My Blade of the Rune King, see this is the Blade of the Rune King nerf. They nerfed the cooldown of it, so it's like 90 seconds instead of 60 seconds now. Which is actually a pretty big deal. Like, in that in that situation, it kind of would have lost me the kill. Although, fuck, I'm dead now. Oh, although, Blade of the Rune King, come on, Blade. Fuck, I'm dead. Fuck, if that Blade of the Rune King it, it came up a second earlier, I would have survived that. Fuck's sake. So lame. Why do you have to nerf all the items I love, Riot? God damn it. The funny thing is as well, because I play jungle mostly, most of uh, Riot's balancing is not directed at junglers. Like, well, some of it is, but I mean, as f if, if like a, an item in general is nerfed, um, then it's not nerfed because the junglers are making it overpowered. Unless it's just like a jungle. So like Spirit of the Ancient Golem, for example, is an item which is just used by junglers and is overpowered. But no one else uses that. It, items like Blade of the King, however, and for, let's say um, Warmogs was another one. Um, although Warmogs isn't a very good example, I should stick to. So, like Spirit of the Old Lizard and uh, Blade of the King are two examples of items. Welcome back, we needed him back. Are two examples of items which were nerfed, as in made worse for the jungler, but not because the jungler made them over, made it overpowered. I don't know what the hell is going on here. I can probably kill this guy now. He's dead. Don't fucking do it. Oh shit, I fucked that up. I fucked my combo up. I don't think this guy's got enough mana to actually kill me. Yeah, what? I, I messed up my slow there, actually. When I engaged that fight. Because I, I, me I meant to... A good combo for you to engage, I would show you, but I actually want to recall because I don't know where Carthus is and I don't want to appear out of the bush and kill me. Dragons just respawn though, so we should take that out. Okay, so this is the good... When you want, when you are engaging ganks, this is what you want to do. I'm just going to buy Moby Boots here. Another pink ward, although I probably shouldn't have done that. Right, you want to put your clone down, E, and then jump to your clone. Because you want to do that because when you put your clone down and then E, that slows the enemy. So you want to, you know, slow them and then jump on them and then punch the crap out of them. What I did there was I used my W and then instantly W'd onto them and then used my E. So I didn't actually slow them. You, your your E only slows if your shadow if it if your E hits with your shadow because your your shadow like mimics all, all abilities that you do. So um, that was just a misplay by me, but it didn't really matter in the end. I don't think really. This guy's dead. You know, we need to really take down towers. We we have a lot of pressure um, ourselves. And with this pressure, we really just need to take down towers. I'm right there as well. I've, I, I took away... Shit. Might be able to get this guy. Oh my god, my ult was up. I didn't use it. My I could have just... I could have ulted back to my clone here. But I fucked up. I have no idea what Ash is doing here though. I think she came to. I think Ash came to save me or something. Even though she really couldn't save me, I just went to dive. I like it. W that was quite greedy by me, but I I had like the play. Again, I had the play like out in my head. I had it planned, and I just failed it. I just failed it. Like I just the execution was just off. Like it was really poor by me, which is why you could argue, oh, you shouldn't have done that. That was just suicide. And it was like, Meh, yeah, but. It wasn't really suicide because I could have got away with it. I had, you know, the, I had it planned out in my head. So, um, 
I don't know. I, it was probably a player I would still make in the future. I just failed the execution. But I did. The only thing is, when you do go really balls deep and aggressive like this, especially at lower elos, but really across all of um, all solo queue, people will try and save you. If you're in trouble, oftentimes people will try and save you, even if it means they put themselves in danger, unnecessarily so. But they do. They put themselves in danger to try and save you. They think, oh, he's going in. We should all go in. And, he, and he, they die. They follow you and they die. And whereas, you know, it's a mistake by them to... They shouldn't be following because they can't help you. They couldn't, can't actually do anything and they're just going to die. It's still because of you that they do it. So it's something which you should hold uh, responsibility for. So in that instance, Ash's death, I, I blame myself for that death. I think I can get this guy still. You really need to flash for that, Zaraf, but whatever. No, we need, like I said, we need to get towers. This mid tower's already down, so I don't think we really need to take that. Um, but, all the first uh, towers are now dead, which is good, because that means we have a lot of pressure. And uh, this is actually a really good play by by the two supports here. Oh, shit, I missed. Um, they both have an oracle. At this stage in the game, is really good. They should, they should both have oracles at this stage in the game. Because it, it just it gives it takes away a lot of pressure. If you have a lot of towers and you have an oracles, then the enemy have no vision outside of very very limited range. So you really want to be doing that if you can. If you can get an early oracles, do it. And the fact that this Alistair has one as well really surprises me because I don't think they they did too well on the lane. No, oh, excuse me, I got hiccups. I don't think they did too well on the lane to really warrant him warrant having an oracles. It's not really something which Loido supports do too much. So, kudos to this guy for actually doing it. This is good, though, I think. I don't actually have my ult, but I don't really need it anymore. I don't really need my ult to start to dominate these guys. I'm really fed. And now, th it's plays like that, which is, which is what's going to win us the game now. Because we need to keep those plays up in order to make pushes onto towers. I, a downside to Zed is that he's not very good at pushing towers. Because, whoops. Because he's... You know melee and he's quite fragile so he can't just stand at the front and like tank you know risk tanking tower oh shit that saw me i think i could have killed this class otherwise yeah yeah that saw me which is a shame but i think we can kill this guy's bot now awesome i use my Oh, I didn't actually use my play room kit. What the fuck? I keep I smart cast things and it oh bollocks. I should have used my blade then actually. I smart cast items and they never go off and it's it really confuses me. I don't know why it never works. But then I wasn't I wasn't actually paying any attention and I virus was there and he screwed he screwed me over. Oh wow wow the casting minion that's a shame. But yeah, I could have bladed Varus and then W'd away, but I would have just died to Carthus anyway, so that doesn't really matter too much, I don't think. <laughs> GG. And now, now he doesn't have his ult to go for. Uh, he's fucked. Oh well, but the the fact that this Zerath was just putting on so much aggression, so much pressure mid lane, means that Teemo can now push away this top tower, and he's probably going to get a lot of damage off onto it, which is really good. Now I'm dying. I I'm dying way too much now. Um, because I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of, there, I've died a few times because I've failed executions of plays, um, both times over here, actually, uh, so that, that, they're two deaths, that last death's just, they're just, they're kind of sloppy deaths, I mean, a handful of them, like, the, my first death, which I did, was, um, understandable, because it was just a first blood play, and it was close, but it wasn't, you know, it's just that that's what happens, you know, that's that I'm okay with that death. My other deaths are all ones which I can avoid. So they're things which I need to go back on and it's kind of funny. It's funny how I, I make these videos for you guys, but I actually use them myself as well because I watch them back occasionally. Because when I'm reading, like, replying to comments of uh, from you guys and, like, questions and things, video comments, often, always, um, of course, the uh, video is playing in the background when I'm looking at, at the comments. So... I often like see parts of the of the video again and so I can watch myself play and I can watch my mistakes and I watch them back and I just see little things that I do 
and it helps me when I'm like tilting or when I'm playing poorly. I can look at them and say, that, oh yeah, this is something which I which I've been doing in this video, which I'm not doing anymore. Or I'll look at the video and I'll see I'm making mistakes, and I'll be like, oh yeah, this is something which I you know really shouldn't have done, or something which I played really poorly. Part of it is you know commentating and playing at the same time is actually quite difficult. Um, it's something which I'm getting used to, obviously, because I've been doing this for a bit of bit of a uh, for a long time now. I guess not really long time, but a bit of a long time. And uh, so I'm getting better at it, but it's still something which it's the little details which confuse. Like I often kind of don't really do too well. Just the little things I kind of muck up on a bit too much, and that's stuff I need to improve on still. But um. Okay, we are fighting this now. This is good. That's gotta be... Who got a triple kill? Me? Or Teemo? Damn, I don't know. Anyway, so that was a good fight. Like, I was just, if you noticed, I was playing, I was just... I wasn't just standing around with them because there was no point just standing in mid lane because firstly their blue was up so I thought I'd take that. However, if if their blue, you know, if me taking blue meant that my team would have got um, engaged on and lose the fight, then of course it's not worth getting the blue buff. I would have stayed around my team. But I was still, because we were far ahead, I was confident with my team that if we did get engaged on, I was still close enough that I could then instantly turn around and uh, and help the team still so we wouldn't lose the fight. And also... It's kind of like psychological to an extent, I guess. Or actually, it's probably not psychological. Just it makes sense, really, that if someone's if the enemies see that someone isn't there, i.e., me, they see that I'm not there, they'll go for the fight. Oh shit! Someone's TPing here. They'll they'll go for the fight. They'll think, oh, Zed's not here. Let's fight, and then boom, I, I am there. I'm just you. You just can't see me. I'm actually gonna try and help this Ash out. Fuck. Oh my god, my blade actually wasn't up. Why? This blade knife keeps fucking me over. I shouldn't have gone for it, but I saved Ash's life, so I'm happy. And I got a kill. I keep doing that. I'm like, I need to, I really need to look at the cooldown of this item now. Because I, it's something which I have, like... I used to buy it quite a lot, so I had a lot of, um... I don't know, like... I'd have a feeling of when it was coming up. So I, I would know when... Or I would think I would know when it was up again. But when, whenever, like, cooldowns are changed, it's like when people's ultimate cooldowns are changed. Like, who, who's a good example of this? So, Vayne actually is a good example. Vayne, for example, with her ulti, they, they nerfed the cooldown of it um, at early ranks, I think. And I used to play Vayne, not a lot, but a, a decent amount in, in solo queue, just as the AD, because I can't, like, she was just my favourite AD, I kind of enjoy playing her. So, I always used to know when her ult was up, and then... Or like playing versus her, and then suddenly, it, I would go in for a fight, and it wouldn't be up, and I'd be like, "Oh shit, my ult's not up," because they nerfed it. They nerfed the cooldown of it, and uh, it's something which I, I'm I'm doing now as well. I jump in thinking, "Oh, maybe I can get away with this. Maybe I can just..." I'm, what do I buy? I'm gonna buy a GA. Let's get a GA. Thinking, oh, "I'll get away with this. I got my Blade Rune King. That might give me enough health to get away with it." And it wasn't even up. To be honest, I probably wouldn't have survived anyway. It was just that was just like a pure greed kill but I went one for one so I'm, I'm okay I'm okay with that but yeah so anyway so the reason why I'm going for a uh, guardian angel now it's just because I'm an assassin and I keep going full greed mode and it means I can dive on the enemy carry kill them and not really and still still continue with the fight and because my team is quite far ahead um, I feel like if I jump on them if I jump on the enemies then I can take someone out, and the enemies can't then just, like, wait for me to come back up again in my GA, because my allies will beat the shit out of them, so they have to then change focus, so it's just really good, um, in general for us. Now, we can kill this. Didn't even wait for my ult to go off. But it's, just, it's picks like that, which is what, it's, is what makes Zed a good champion. And you can't really do that a lot when you're playing Jungle Zed, just because he's... It, it, well, it's just... 
you don't junglers don't get access to as much farm as the laners do so that's why assassins aren't very good in the jungle uh, by nature they're not very good in the jungle because they, they need money to be able to assassinate people and they don't get that money but when you're fed like I am this game it's fine because you can do whatever you want I'm coming for you Aatrox you ain't gonna escape from me sunshine nice try though What's that? 14 for 6. Yeah, all my deaths are pretty garbage. I'm feeding quite hard this game. Teemo! No, Teemo! Poor Teemo. I probably shouldn't do this because I'll actually die. Haha. <laughs> Maybe not. Who else is up? Nasus is up now. I could kill him because my ult was up. I was going to go in for him, but... Nasus has respawned, so I'm like, mm, no, I'm not going to go for that. Although apparently he's rage quit. Okay. I'm looking at like the, the builds in this game, and a lot of them are just not very good. Actually, that's a lie. Now oh, the game's over. Only Nasus' build is not very good. You shouldn't really rush a Triforce on a, on a tank jungler. Like, you should get Frozen Fist all the every time on Nasus. Always get Frozen Fist on Nasus over Triforces, because it gives him so much like utility. And it makes him a lot tankier, especially if you're playing uh, jungle Nasus. If you're playing top Nasus, maybe you can get Triforce. But anyway, so that was my jungle Z game, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful. Um, yeah, if you did like it, feel free to subscribe to my channel here, and you can also find me on Facebook and on Twitter, and uh, you can follow my stream on Twitch too. Check me out when I'm streaming. Um, but yeah, thank thank you for watching this video, guys, and I uh, will see you in my next video.